Nathan Dunlap, 2020. On December 14, 1993, a mass murder took place at a Chuck E. Cheese in Aurora, Colorado. Nathan Dunlap, a 19-year-old former employee of the restaurant, committed the crime. Dunlap waited until late that night when the restaurant was closing. His victims included five former co-workers, all of whom were working the late shift. In about five minutes, Dunlap killed four of his victims and injured one. He then left the restaurant with a bounty of tokens, keychains, credit cards, and one fifth hundred dollars. The brutality of his crime led the jurors to believe he deserved the death penalty. It's been 21 years since Cromwell's parents waited that long for their version of ultimate justice to be served. We'll see what happens because we've had so many hearings and delays and so forth, so we'll see what happens. But it's nice to have a date to you th at least work with. However, in 2020, the punishment Dunlap rightfully deserved was commuted to a life sentence without parole, plus 108 years. But this next guy probably deserved the death penalty even more. Peter Scully, 2018. Peter Scully's case was so severe that the Filipino jurisdiction where he committed the crimes is considering throwing out the rulebook and reinstating a law on execution by firing squad. And Scully's attitude towards his crimes is so nonchalant, it's scary. Even more so for prosecution witnesses who watched the child porn videos Scully created. So if it wasn't a dog-like urge as Scully easily dismissed, then what else could it be but pure evil and derangement? Scully, who's already serving a life sentence in the Philippines for human trafficking and rape, had been given an additional 129-year sentence for sexually abusing children as young as 18 months, according to prosecutors. His three Filipino accomplices were also charged with 60 offences, including child abuse, trafficking, rape, and producing child pornography. The offences date back to 2012 and were among the dozens of charges filed against Scully after his arrest in 2015 and eventual sentencing in 2018. And speaking of trafficking, how about this next one? Chauncey Price, 2017. Top story starting Douglas County, where the leader of a human trafficking ring has been sentenced to 304 years in prison. Chauncey Price, a 30-year-old Colorado man, was handed one of the longest sentences ever at 304 years. Douglas County District Court Judge Teresa Slade announced the sentence on October 8, 2017, after Price was found guilty on 13 counts, including human trafficking for sexual servitude and the pimping of a child. During his trial, three of his victims recovered counted their harrowing experiences. Price and his accomplices even placed online ads offering them up for sex. One of his victims said at the sentencing that he threatened to kill her sister if she didn't comply, and Price pressured her to sleep with up to eight men a day. Despite multiple chances to reform, including deferred judgments, probation, community corrections, and so forth, he continued his criminal activities. Even while out on bond, he tried to contact one of his victims. Judge Slade emphasized that Price had numerous opportunities to change his behavior, but never did, hence the severe sentence. But heads up, there's more of those up ahead. Tyrone Lavono Williams, 2021. Tyrone Williams, 46, convicted of raping and molesting two children and a woman, won't be getting out of prison anytime soon, if ever. On September 24, 2020, he was sentenced to 480 years to life in a Tulare County court. Williams molested the two children, both under 14, in 2014 and 2015. He also raped an adult woman at a park on Mooney Belvedere in Visalia in 2019. Williams was identified through DNA evidence and later confirmed confirmed by the victim. Williams had also previously been convicted in 1995 in Monterey County for two counts of rape against two teens. Back then, he served 17 years in prison before being released and registering as a sex offender. Ariel Castro, 2013. Michelle Knight is one of three women held captive in Ariel Castro's Cleveland home for about a decade. She revealed in an interview that she was tied like a fish and gagged, and that was in stark contrast to her testimony during the trial of her captor. You took 11 years of my life away, and I have got it back. I spent 11 years in hell. Now your hell is just beginning and she made sure to reiterate that Castro's hell is just beginning from where hers had ended. In 2013, Castro was sentenced for life, in addition to another 1,000 years for 937 counts of rape and kidnapping. Knight was abducted in August 2002 when she was 20 years old and subsequently spent 11 years in captivity. She, along with Amanda Berry and Gina De Jesus, escaped from Castro's house on May 6, 2013, when Berry managed to push open a door
door and call for help. However, Knight was the only victim to appear at his sentencing. The other victims were represented by family members. On his part, Ariel Castro, who is 53, pleaded guilty. During his statement in court, he went on rambling about how he was mentally sick and was plagued by sexual urges. Unfortunately, a month into his sentence, Castro was found dead in his cell. His death was ruled a suicide, though a prison report suggested he may have accidentally killed himself while choking for a sexual thrill. That all happened in Cali. But here's one more from Colorado, which has got to be a record. Devon Erickson, 2021. Devon Erickson was convicted in 2021 on 46 charges, including first-degree murder for the death of Kendrick Castillo. On the flip side, Castillo, an 18-year-old senior, was celebrated as a hero for trying to stop Erickson's gun attack on a classroom at the STEM school Highlands Ranch near Denver. Erickson teamed up with fellow student Alec McKinney for the shooting on May 7, 2019. Erickson was 18 at the time, so he received a mandatory life sentence. However, McKinney, who was 16, was sent sentenced to life in prison only recently, but could be eligible for parole after about 20 years under a juvenile offender program. It was an emotional hearing where survivors shared their trauma, including Kendrick Castillo's parents, John and Maria Castillo. Afterwards, Judge Teresa Michelle Slade slapped hundreds of years to Erickson's life sentence for multiple charges of attempted murder and other offenses, of up to 1,282 years of prison time. Erickson and McKinney had hoped to kill as many students as they could, but the shooting was thwarted when Kendrick Castillo and two other students charged Erickson, whose gun jammed after four shots. A school security guard similarly apprehended McKinney. James Alex Fields Jr., 2019. James Alex Fields Jr., 22, was sentenced for numerous federal hate crimes committed during the infamous August 2017 attack in Charlottesville. One victim, Heather Heyer, 32, died when Fields drove his muscle car into a crowd protesting a white nationalist rally. Fields had earlier on pleaded guilty to 29 of 30 federal hate crimes as part of a deal with prosecutors who agreed not to seek the death penalty. His lawyers equally requested a more more lenient sentence than life in prison, citing his profile, but this appeal failed. Graphic video footage widely shared on social media showed Fields driving his car into counter-protesters, killing higher and injuring others. Federal prosecutors also presented evidence from his social media profiles. It turns out, less than a month before the attack, Fields posted an image on Instagram depicting a car driving into a crowd of people with the caption, you have the right to protest, but I'm late for work. Ultimately, he got two life sentences in addition to four 19 more years of incarceration. Up next is a cruel father. Herman C. 2020. Herman C. was sentenced to four life terms for molesting his daughters, who courageously detailed years of abuse during a sentencing hearing. As deputies escorted him into court, C. directed insults at his prosecutor, Christina Datilo, who played a key role in securing his conviction on 22 counts of rape. Turning his attention to Judge Patrick Dinkalaka, C. defiantly declared that he only bows down to his god. C. then directed a slur at Judge Dinkalaka. Well, you want me to kiss your ass? Dinkalaka responded with a firm no while remaining composed and proceeded to sentence C to four life terms for his heinous crimes. At least C admitted this much, I'm a dirty man. Angela Stites, the mother of two of the victims, was also present in court and received an 86-year prison sentence as an accomplice. C himself was sentenced to a total of 221 years behind bars. The abuse spanned 14 years across Norwood and Coleraine Township. One victim recounted that it was her boyfriend who finally helped her realize she was being abused, prompting her to disclose the horrors to a school resource officer. Nathaniel Veltman, 2024. Nathaniel Veltman, 22, received five life sentences. They included four for murder and one for attempted murder following his conviction by a jury recently. In 2021, he fatally struck a family with his truck while they were walking leisurely in London, Ontario. Victim Salman Afzal, 46, and his wife Madiha Salman, 44, along with their daughter Yumna Afzal, 15, and Mr. Afzal's mother, Talat Afzal, 74, lost their lives in the attack. The couple's nine-year-old son was seriously 
injured but survived, hence the appended charge of attempted murder. During the trial, evidence revealed that Veltman randomly targeted the family for their distinctive ethnicity, and afterwards, he confessed to police and made a racist gesture associated with white supremacists. As such, an additional terrorism charge was being heard, but whatever the outcome, Veltman won't be eligible for parole after 25 years, marking the first time a Canadian jury deliberated on charges related to white supremacist terrorism. Veltman had especially been inspired by shootings in New Zealand and Norway. And speaking of crazy perps, here's one for the books. Juan Santiago Ruiz, 2018. Can anyone imagine a rogue gunman at a crowded airport of all places? Esteban Santiago Ruiz was such a man sentenced to life in prison for his involvement in the mass shooting at Fort Dale Hollywood International Airport on January 6, 2017. His actions resulted in five deaths and serious injuries to six others. Consequently, on May 23, 2018, Santiago Ruiz entered a guilty plea specifically to five counts of committing acts of violence at an international airport causing death and six counts counts of committing acts of violence causing serious bodily injury. He was subsequently sentenced to five consecutive life terms for the first five counts and consecutive terms of 20 years for the remaining counts totaling 120 years. It shows Esteban Santiago Ruiz reaching into his waistband, pulling out a gun and firing the first three shots in his rampage. According to police reports and court records, around 1 p.m. on the day, Santiago Ruiz initiated an armed attack in the Terminal 2 baggage claim area of the airport. He used a handgun to shoot numerous victims, targeting their heads and bodies until he ran out of ammunition. Shortly after the shooting, he was apprehended by officers after dropping his handgun on the ground and staying with crowds. Anderson Lee Aldrich, 2023. Anderson Lee Aldrich was the shooter at Club Q, an LGBTQ plus nightclub in Colorado Springs, where five people were killed in November 2022. He has since pleaded guilty to state charges and was sentenced to life in prison five times over before being transferred to the Wyoming State Penitentiary in 2023. In state court, Aldrich admitted guilt to five counts of murder, 46 counts of attempted murder, and two counts of bias-motivated crimes. Subsequently, federal prosecutors further charged him with five hate crimes for murder and an additional 69 violent crime charges, racking up to 2,208 years behind the slammer. But while fresh federal charges could theoretically carry a death penalty, Colorado state law does not permit executions. The shooting tragically targeted one of Colorado Springs' most popular gay bars, resulting in the deaths of five individuals and injuries to 25 others. Jared Warren Ramos, 2021. Jared Warren Ramos is the gunman who killed five Capital Gazette employees at Annapolis, Maryland in June 2018 and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Ramos, 41, pleaded guilty to 23 criminal charges related to the newsroom shooting, but used an insanity defense to claim he was not criminally responsible. However, a jury found him criminally responsible. In 2021, County Judge Michael Wax consequently sentenced Ramos to five consecutive life terms without the possibility of parole, thus concluding the long legal battle. Ramos did not make a statement in court received another 345 years of time, all to be served consecutively. Ramos had accused the Capital Gazette of ruining his reputation with its coverage of his 2011 misdemeanor harassment conviction. He had been accused of harassing a former high school classmate and filed several lawsuits against the newspaper, all of which were dismissed. In retaliation, Ramos opened fire in the Capital Gazette's office building, killing five employees. But stick around because it gets even more desperate with this next one. Daryl Brooks, 2022. Daryl Brooks was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for driving his SUV into a crowd at a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin in 2022, killing six people and injuring dozens more. The victims included an eight-year-old boy, a loving grandmother, and a woman who was excited to make her debut in a Dancing Grannies showcase. In addition to the six life sentences, the judge imposed hundreds of years for the remaining 70 counts Brooks was found guilty of. Specifically, Brooks received 17 and a half years for each of the 61 first-degree counts of recklessly endangering safety with a dangerous weapon. Alongside that total of 762 and a half years for reckless endangerment, Judge Doro added three years each for two bail-jumping convictions and nine months for domestic battery, which all added up to 1,067.5 years of punishment. The judge even graciously allowed Brooks to represent himself. 
But during the trial, Brooks was often belligerent and disruptive, frequently speaking over the judge with outlandish arguments. He was twice sent to a separate room for repeatedly talking over the judge. It makes you wonder what the heck this Daryl guy was thinking. And speaking of crime that may not have been premeditated, let's try this for size. Jared Lee Lofner, 2012. In 2012, a federal judge ruled that Jared Lee Lofner, who out of nowhere killed six people and wounded former Congresswoman Gabriel Giffords, will spend the rest of his life in prison. Lofner was sentenced to seven life terms plus 140 additional years. The life sentences represent one for each person who died and another for the attempted assassination of the Congresswoman. During the court statements from the victims, Lofner sat still with his arms crossed, speaking only once to tell Judge Burns that he chose not to address the court. Susie Heileman, who had brought nine-year-old Christina Taylor Green to Gifford's Congress on Your Corner event, confronted Lofner saying, You turned a civics lesson into a nightmare. And indeed, Lofner did, with his version of an armed shootout, which occurred in the Tucson locale those many years ago. Literally, crazy stuff, just like the next one. 1. L. Go, 2017 Juan Elgo, 48, pleaded a no contest in a county superior court to seven counts of murder and three counts of attempted murder for his 2012 shooting rampage. However, prosecutors decided not to seek the death penalty against Go, who had been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. He was a Korean citizen who had dropped out of the Oikos University Nursing School months before the rampage and demanded a refund of his tuition. When he didn't get it, he brought a 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol and three loaded magazines to the college intending to kill an administrator. Finding that the administrator no longer worked there, Go instead forced a receptionist into a classroom at gunpoint and shot her along with nine former classmates before fleeing. He was arrested shortly afterward in nearby Alameda. Despite an initial mental evaluation, Go was declared competent to stand trial in 2016 after four years of mental health treatment at Napa State Hospital. Go was subsequently sentenced to seven consecutive life terms in prison without parole, plus an additional 271 years, but here's an even longer sentence. George Wagner IV 2022, and it was all about an inter-family dispute gone wrong in Pike County. Prosecutors said the killing of eight members of the Rodden family was related to a custody dispute over Wagner's niece, which both families shared. So Wagner was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences, one for each victim, plus an additional 121 years for other offenses. Wagner initially denied knowing about his family's involvement in the murders and testified that he wouldn't have let it happen if he had known of the plans. Beforehand, his younger brother, Edward Jake Wagner, pleaded guilty to aggravated murder and other charges, agreeing to testify against George and their parents in a deal to avoid potential death sentences for the family. Their mother, Angela Wagner, also pleaded guilty to helping plan the murders. Their father, George Billy Wagner III, has so far pleaded not guilty to the killings. A niece indeed, but was there ever a worse motive to commit murder? Check this one out. Saifullo Saipov, 2023. This Islamic extremist who drove a rented truck into pedestrians and cyclists on a New York City bike path in 2017 received eight consecutive life sentences following an almost hour-long defense of his actions. Saifullo Saipov was sentenced to life in prison for each of the eight victims, along with a consecutive term of 260 years and two additional concurrent life sentences imposed by a federal district judge. Prior to sentencing, Saipov spoke for nearly an hour in Uzbek via a translator discussing the history of Islam and attempting to justify his crimes, all the while displaying no signs of remorse. During the court proceedings, 21 survivors and family members of victims delivered impact statements detailing how the attack had irreversibly altered their lives. All in all, 19 individuals spoke in court. Up next is one more Colorado case too many. James Holmes, 2015. A Colorado judge sentenced James Egan Holmes to multiple life terms, plus an additional 3,318 years in prison for the Aurora Movie Theater Massacre, which resulted in the deaths of 12 people and the injury of 70 others. Holmes, a 27-year-old former graduate student, received one life term for each person he killed, along with the extensive sentence for attempted murders and for rigging his apartment with explosives. Judge Carlos A. Samoa Jr. stated firmly, it is the court's intention that the defense 
defendant never set foot in free society again. If there was ever a case that warranted a maximum sentence, this is it. The defendant does not deserve any sympathy. Holmes had entered Theatre 9 of the Century 16 Megaplex in Aurora, wearing a helmet, gas mask, and ballistic gear during a midnight showing of The Dark Knight Rises on July 20, 2012. He threw tear gas and opened fire with a shotgun, rifle, and pistol, carrying over 700 rounds of ammunition. After his gun jammed, he surrendered to authorities outside the theater. Warren Troy Noop, 2017 South Africa. South African car salesperson Warren Troy Noop, now a convicted paedophile, was sentenced to 32 life terms and 170 years in prison for 870 charges related to rape and possession of child pornography. Noop wept and pleaded for help after confessing guilt to all 870 charges, which included rape and possession of child pornography. His victims were three young girls aged 1, 12, and 13, with one of the girls attempting suicide. Noop's criminal Criminal activities came to light when US officials discovered him sharing numerous videos on a website frequented by pedophiles. Nicholas Cruz, 2022. Nicholas Cruz, the gunman responsible for the Parkland school shooting, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. This followed a jury decision that did not unanimously recommend the death penalty, which disappointed and angered many of the families of the 17 people he killed. Cruz admitted guilt to all 17 murder charges and 17 attempted murder charges related to the shooting. The Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting with Nicholas at its center remains the deadliest mass school shooting in the US till date. Sadly, three jurors had opted for life imprisonment, sparing Cruz from a death sentence. Florida law mandates that a jury must unanimously recommend the death penalty for it to be imposed, so instead, he got 34 life sentences plus 380 additional years. But how about when a cop is the perp? David Carrick, 2023, United Kingdom. The judge overseeing this case didn't mince words when sentencing this officer of the law to 36 life sentences just last year for being a serial rapist under the guise of being a public protector. In the two-day sentencing hearing at Southwark Crown Court, it was revealed how 48-year-old Carrick abused his authority to commit a series of violent and brutal sexual assaults spanning from 2003 to 2020. His victims described facing pure evil while recounting their harrowing experiences. One victim detailed how Carrick sent her a photo holding a work-issued gun, accompanied by the chilling message, Remember, I am the boss. Another victim testified that Carrick deceitfully portrayed himself as a trustworthy figure, claiming he was the safest person she could be with because he was a police officer. However, he then took her to his nearby flat where he raped her. Carrick had previously pleaded guilty to 49 charges, including 24 counts of rape, along with charges of sexual assault, controlling and coercive behavior, and false imprisonment. Barry Walker, 2022. Barry Walker, 58, a former doctor from Glenwood, California, pleaded guilty to multiple counts of raping children. Following his guilty plea, Walker was sentenced by a judge to 21 life sentences. This plea came just a day after Walker was handed 18 life sentences by a judge in Pike County. In total, across both counties, Walker faced charges including 34 counts of rape, 29 counts of exploiting children via computer, 28 counts of producing, directing, or promoting sexual performances by children, and 29 counts of engaging children in sexually explicit conduct for use in visual or print media. To be clear, that amounted to 1,710 years of prison time. Collectively, Walker was charged with 39 Class Y felonies, 76 Class B felonies, 17 Class C felonies, and 11 sentence enhancements for offenses committed in the presence of a child. For each Class Y felony, Walker faced a sentence of 10 to 40 years or life in prison, 5 to 20 years for each Class B felony, and 3 to 10 years for each Class C felony. So do the math if you like. Brenton Tarrant, 2020, New Zealand. The Australian white supremacist who perpetrated the 2019 Christchurch mosque shootings in New Zealand had previously posted online about his intent to attack significant locations four years before his deadly rampage. Brenton Tarrant targeted the Al Noor and Linwood mosques in Christchurch on March 15, 2019, during Friday prayers. During these attacks, 51 people, including women and children, lost their lives, and 49 others sustained injuries, including two Turkish citizens. Tarrant even 
live-streamed the assaults on his social media account, but was apprehended by police shortly thereafter. In 2020, Tarrant was sentenced to 52 life sentences without parole plus 480 years in Christchurch High Court after being found guilty of 51 counts of murder, 40 counts of attempted murder, and one terrorism offense. And finally, this one takes the cake. Patrick Wood Crucius, 2023. Patrick Wood Crucius, a 24-year-old man from Texas, was recently sentenced to 90 consecutive life sentences in prison for carrying out a mass shooting at the Cielo Vista Walmart in El Paso, Texas, on August 3, 2019. His attack resulted in the deaths of 23 people and injuries to 22 others. On February 8 last year, he pleaded guilty to the 90-count indictment. The defendant consequently received one life sentence for each count in the indictment, which included hate crime acts that led to the fatalities, ultimately adding up to 90 life sentences. Crucius was also sentenced for 22 counts of bodily injury and attempted murder involving the 22 individuals injured in the shooting. He confessed to choosing El Paso, a border city, as his target in an attempt to deter Mexican and other Hispanic immigrants from entering the United States. Talk about that. If you enjoyed this video, click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos.